Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom music edition for the week of May 28th, 2018. This week in music, we've got more new music. We've got updates on a couple of bands that we talked about actually a couple of months ago and all kinds of new stuff going on. So let's hit up the intro real quick. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. First thing on the list is the Murder Dolls. What? That other Slipknot side project that actually technically isn't a Slipknot side project anymore. Joy Jordanson's band, The Murder Dolls, where he was playing guitar and not drums like he does in Slipknot and in Sinsanum, um, might be doing new music soon. Wednesday 13 did an interview recently where he was talking about his, uh, they were talking about a lot of things, but Murder Dolls got brought up and he said, that he talked to Joey about sometime last year. He wasn't specific with how long ago because last year was only five months ago. So he wasn't specific about how long ago, but it was sometime in 2017 they spoke. But Joey was working on a record. Wednesday 13 was working on a record. So nothing really happened then. Uh, now that they have both put out their records, I'm sure that I know Wednesday's on tour. Joey's going to be on tour soon. So once their touring cycle ends, which will very likely be at the end of the summer, they'll hopefully get together and start working on new music together. And that means maybe next year we will get a new Murder Dolls record. Uh, for anyone who doesn't really know, Murder Dolls are kind of a goth glam punk band. Uh, with uh, definitely a cheesy like B-movie horror theme and th I mean they're not horrible if you're into bubblegum punk they're really not that bad but that's all totally rumor and speculation at this point so let's kick on next next up we're talking about Otep yes Otep not Opeth I wish we were talking about Opeth uh, kind of but uh, Otep just put out a new song off of their uh, upcoming Colt 45 record, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, the name of this song is To The Gallows. It's super politically charged, just like Otep does. Uh, I feel like listening to this, they're stepping backwards in the realm of audio production and just the mix is really bad on this. The song itself just judging it by the music and not necessarily by the production value is also super mediocre uh otep is trying for uh it, it like this song structurally kind of sounds like trick off of uh, uh what was it off of sevis tra was it sevis tra uh, it was jihad ep it was on jihad ep and i believe it was also on sevis tra um but like like you can see that so like that's a formula that she's done and that's not bad that they've created their own formula or that oh she has created her own formula but um it's a little it feels like the formula was taking uh was taking precedent over the quality or the content right, even and it, i don't know this song just really falls short and that's not even a comment on the politics which are the, a whole other issue uh, so yeah, it's Link in the description to the video if you want to check it out It's not the best Otep song I've ever heard and I feel like this is the reason why they're not Relevant in the conversation so much anymore, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments or uh, Agree with me whatever you want to do. Just uh, let's have that conversation down low Next, we got another new track off of Bleeding Through's record, which uh, actually just came out this week. And it's... This is another one that's super formulaic. Like, I... It, all right, so... It's not a Bleeding Through formula, and I think that's my issue. This song, it's called End Us, 
uh, off of Love Will Kill Us All. It, and and link again in the description. The name of the song is End Us. And the it's it's just this is super uh, traditional. <clears throat> This is super traditional rock and roll formula. Verse, chorus, verse, pre, uh, bridge, kind of. It's a, it's more of a pre-chorus. So it's verse, pre-chorus, uh, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, breakdown, verse out. Uh, it's. I have higher expectations for the guys in Bleeding Through. Let's. I. I, I just would rather put it that way. And this one didn't really meet it. I. Uh, I will get the whole record, and we can probably talk about that next week. But that's all we have so far. Again, if you want to check it out and discuss the song with me, we can do that down in the comments, and the link is in the description. Next, we're talking about Core Ten. David Silvera from Korn's new band-ish. I say ish because they kind of sort of broke up. Uh, it, we talked about them a few months ago. They are really, really not good. And the only reason we're talking about them now is because of their tie to corn. Because David Silvera is still one of the better things about... I mean, musically, David was fantastic to be able to tie together the nonsense that Fieldy was doing and the craziness that Korn, or that uh, Monkey and Head were doing in Korn. Uh, so it was really disheartening to see him a part of such a really mediocre band. In the description, you will find a link to the last uh, single that they released, and you'll see why I'm cool with them breaking up. But... They didn't break up entirely. They just lost. So they had two vocalists, drums, guitar, bass, and keys. What they lost are the two vocalists and the keys. So you still have David and then the other two guys who are irrelevant because they haven't really done much. But uh, so they're they're currently looking for a new vocalist. So if you want to hit up their Facebook page, if you got the chops, then you could join a band with the ex drummer from Corn, the founding drummer of Corn. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully they find somebody good that, and they find a direction that makes more sense. I just, they're, that single sounds like they wanted to be, uh, Five Finger Death Punch with kind of a rap element to it. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. I do not blame if you don't click that link. But we're moving on. Next, we're talking about Good Charlotte and their new record. Why are we talking about Good Charlotte? Just because it's fun to make fun of shitty musicians. Um, they used to be a bubblegum punk, a pop punk, whatever you want to call it. They used to be a poor excuse for punk, is how I like to put it. Um, with, I mean, it was catchy stuff, and it, it, their first record, there's a couple of uh, tunes on there that are like, yeah, alright, I'm not going to turn the, the station on the radio if this comes on, but that's about the extent of their quality. Um, this new song, it's off of their new record called Generation RX, or Generation Prescription, I don't know. Um, the name of the song is Actual Pain. Yeah, you guys know what Actual Pain is, I believe you. Um, and it's, this is like a Linkin Park record. This is, this is not anything even kind of resembling pop punk, so... Even worse! <laughs> Ah, bad music. Why is bad music popular? They just signed a worldwide uh, deal with BMG and crap, crap, crap. Moving next to something good is Hero the Hero. At some point, he dropped the DA because it used to be Hero the Hero, and now it's Hero the Hero because maybe he passed an English course. I don't know. Um. But he just put out a new song, so I've been meaning to check out Hero the Hero for quite some time, actually. I read an article, I can't remember in what magazine, years ago about uh, band, bands or groups that are carrying the new metal torch. Uh, being a somewhat of a fan of new metal, I was intrigued. He was on the list, I wanted to check him out. This was my first time checking him out, and I was not disappointed. The name of the song is Bullet. Um, this is how you combine, this it has, you can't really call it like a, a Rage Against the Machine feel necessarily, but it's not a new metal feel. This is legitimately a hip hop song, it just has metal 
uh, musicians behind the hip hop. So again, it's not new metal because he's not really screaming. I mean, I feel like there's maybe one section where the background vocal was a little bit of a screamy kind of harsh vocal, but but it, it that's not the focus. The focus is his rhymes and and this is this is a fence I really would suggest if you like either genre that you check out Hero the Hero. The song is bullet. Link to the video is in the description. Our last bit of news is a little bit of an update on Spotify. It appears XXX Tentacion uh, is getting put back onto the Spotify playlists. Uh, now, for just as a real quick rebuff, uh, XXX Tentacion and R. Kelly were the big names in, the, in this scandal, but I'm sure it affected a few other artists, uh, probably quite a few other artists. Um, but what it is is spotify didn't remove them from the platform spotify just removed them from the spotify algorithm created playlists uh so it was a little bit more difficult for people to find their music um people got really upset that they couldn't find their xxx tentacion so they caused such a hubbub about it that spotify is putting him back in their algorithm playlists uh <laughs> This is so... Alright, so I don't think that Spotify should... I don't think Spotify should remove people for the reasons that they chose to remove people for, but they are a privately owned company, so it is totally within their right to do so. Now, as a company, I feel like they should be even with their uh, decision-making when it comes to this stuff, and that includes not just bending... I mean, it, the people pay their bills, so it, it, again, they can do really what they want. I just, this is so bass backwards. This is, if the people want a rapper who beat a pregnant woman and went to prison for it, but they don't want a band that might hold a slightly conservative viewpoint. Or they're gonna turn on a band like All That Remains, not that All That Remains is that great, but All That Remains, uh, Phil Labonte is a, an outspoken conservative. And so they, uh, that's lost them some fans. So people are totally cool with somebody, again, who beat a pregnant woman and went to prison for it, but heaven forbid if you're pro-life. Just doesn't make sense now, does it? But that, guys, is the end of this week's episode. Thank you very much for watching. What did I miss this week in music? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can join the conversation, find the social media links, find the links to the stores, all of that stuff is up on generallynerdy.net. There is a Patreon page. We talk about it in every episode. Patreon.com slash generallynerdy. Go check that out. You can support the channel a little more directly for even just a dollar a month. It's all up on Patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you are new to the channel, though, guys, subscribe. Press that subscribe button. Ring that bell so YouTube knows you actually want to subscribe. And, you know, because that doesn't really mean anything. Or, if you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But, before you do, before we go to the places and do the things, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, probably here.